Okay, so next game with the Simic Control deck. Um, I just want to show you this one. This one is just, it really shows the, the smooth play you can get with this deck. So it's opening hand, nothing great. Um, no untap lands. You have a cycling land, you really want a forest. You have Coiling Oracle. Right now you're looking at you will not be able to play that until turn 3. Um, but what you will do, we're on the draw, uh, still do not see an untapped land, so what you're going to want to do here is use the Evolving Wilds to search out a forest, because um, we're going on the assumption we are not going to get the untapped land for turn 2 Oracle. Uh, if we do top off the blue, then that's fantastic. If not, we have the mana available, we can cycle the thicket and search out the blue with this wilds. So you see we do end up with a forest, not exactly what we're looking for, <laughs> getting a lot of odd draw in this game because you get heavy on green and this deck really does not have heavy green mana source. Um, but that's okay, like I said, we're going to cycle that. You see we draw yet another forest, uh, but what we want to do, we want to play the the wild so we can get an island in play for Coiling Oracle on next turn. So my opponent plays a hound on turn one, oh sorry, turn two. Um, and this is not going to be a great thing because this is going to trigger and kill the oracle, you know, and, and not really trade the two. You think, oh, it's a one toughness, you can trade them, but with the ability on that hound, you really can't use a one one toughness creature to block it. That's okay, we're still going to try and ramp up something. We have a vapor snag if we need to get that later on off the field. Um, but we're going to put the oracle in play. You want to do that before you play a land just to see what you get. Uh, we do draw into another land, which is great, because now we can put that forest down. Um, we're going to pass through the turn, and you have mana available for accumulated knowledge, rune snag, prohibit, still vapor snag is on the table, you know. That's really kind of the ideal thing that we wanted to see right there. So in turn, my opponent plays think twice. You could counterspell that, but I would rather save that for some creature control. Uh, I like to, you know, say with this deck is, is really light on the creature control, so you kind of want to use those counter spells to stop that every time you can. So he's going to ponder to find his third land, it looks like, and swing through, and we're going to let the Hound go through, like I said. Um, using the Oracle is going to be kind of a last minute thing, just because of the fact that it's going to die anyways, um, and, and keep the Hound alive. Now my opponent tries to put down a second one, this is something that I'm going to want to counterspell. Um, let's open up the grave real quick. Uh, I always talk about how... Um, uh, where am I going with this? We'll put this down here. Um, how the first Rune Snag is not a great thing. Um, so that's why I chose to use Rune Snag here on the first turn. He definitely doesn't have the opportunity to pay the two, so we want to start building the Rune Snags in our graveyard as soon as possible. Save the Prohibit since it is an end-all counter spell for later. Um, if this was my second Rune Snag, if I already had one in the graveyard, then the right play would be to go with the Prohibit. Um, prohibit's going to hit less options without the kicker. Um, so you really just want to be careful about when you use which counter spell. You know, as you think about which ones have have a definite counter, which ones have an alternative um, for your opponent to prevent the counter spell. Stuff like that, you just want to keep it in mind. So draw another Thermo Karst, then I will use this at this point to kill off the mountain. Um, we have the opportunity here, we can do this, and then you can Vapor Snag the Hound and hope that he does not get another mountain, um, and that will just delay how long he can get that in the play. Um, you know, and maybe even let it delay long enough to you know, allow you to counterspell it on the way back in. Um, but I decided not to on this time around, because it is so early in the game, you see he did hit that that second red mana source. Um, so now we're sitting really good that we, we decided to hold off on that, because we have the Thermogarst, um, you know, available to us to take care of that yet again. Uh, so we have to take two from this, and that's, that's okay, we still have mana open for Prohibit. Uh, worst case scenario, which is this, he doesn't play anything, we're going to play Accumulated Knowledge and draw our first card off that. Um, that's another card, you know, like the Rune Snag, you want to start throwing those to the graveyard, get as many of those as possible. So you see we draw Rune Snag number two and three. We are going to, again, use the Thermo cards to stop the mountain, um, just to, to see if he's got maybe a counter spell, something like that. You want to kind of draw some cards out uh, so you, you can properly use the Vapor Snag um, and get that around and, and actually deal with this Hound. So he taps three and actually does play the Think Twice from his graveyard, um, showing me that he was not running a counter spell and now I have the opportunity to return the, the Hound to hand, and he's he's going to have a, a lesser chance of having that next red mana source. Um, so, you know, that's just, right there, it's a, a good way for you to pay attention and deal with creatures like that. Um, when you have a splash color with the, the red, you can take care of it by bouncing it to his hand and destroying the red mana source. So now comes the Perilous Mare and the, the Phantasmal Bear. Um, what this is showing me is basically this is the standard pauper version of is it control 
Um, I have seen this this deck list before, so I am at least mildly familiar with what creatures he's running, what plays he's going to be making. Um, and this is going to be a good opportunity for me to chump block the mirror um, with my oracle, and that'll put a creature in the grave. So if I I do end up with a Drake, I um, can get that later on. Now the the mirror will do two damage to me by doing this because I have no other creatures, but you know it's just the what you got to do. Um, you could chump block the bear, but all you're doing is preventing two damage, and the mirror is going to still be alive to keep attacking you turn after turn. So the better choice here is to block the mirror and let it die, um, take that damage source off the table, um, and, and and then you can hope you find an answer for the bear, which which most likely you will uh, without a problem. You know we're down to ten life to seventeen. Um, that may look bad, but it's really not because we're sitting on three counter spells. I will use one to stop the mirror. Um, and this is the opportunity I said where you want to know where to play Rune Snag and where not to. At this point in time, Rune Snag is sitting pretty good. My opponent's at three lands, and he needs four to counter my Rune Snag. Um, so I'm going to hold on to these for later. I'm going to use the Prohibit, which is going to hit less options, although I know this deck is running um, pretty, pretty dominantly a, a two casting cost. Uh, mana curve. Um, so the prohibit would hit pretty often, but still, you know, you want to want to play that as much as you can. So here we're going to have a, a chance to play the cartographer. We do have a cycling land in the graveyard from earlier on. So we're going to um, tap out the double blue for my colorless. We'll have the, the green mana source available. We can cycle this thicket and still have mana open for the rune snag. Um, kind of the, the benefit of those, that's the main reason why I'm not running a full set of counter spells alongside three um, mana leaks is the fact that Rune Snag works better with a, a two-color deck, um, where you have the the one colorless. Um, you could run three counter spells and um, four mana leaks, but you know I think the Rune Snag is is really a better option. Um, you also see here we drew an accumulated knowledge off that. That's a pretty fantastic draw. At this point in time, if my opponent doesn't play anything worth counterspelling, I have accumulated knowledge in hand. I can play that end of turn to draw. Um, he decides he wants to trade the bear for the cartographer, so we let him. He's going to attempt to play the mirror, and I'm actually going to prevent that. Um, I know he's going to be running um, you know, the bears, the mirrors, the hounds, and Delver. Um, and right at this point in time, I want to just keep as much creature control as I can with counter spells. Um, it's something that, you know, it, it really depends on the deck you're facing. Um, really, the fact that this deck is so creature light, you want to be able to counter those spells and destroy those creatures when they're on the stack, not when they're on the battlefield. Um, once they hit the battlefield, you're not able to kill them, you're just able to bump them back to your opponent's hand through the vapor snags. So something just to be aware of with this deck. Now we draw a Coiling Oracle, it's fantastic, finally get a creature on the field and this shows us a Mold Shambler. Um, this is going to go great, my opponent seems to be struggling a little bit, being stuck at only 3 land. Um, he's got five cards in hand, so I imagine that he is sitting pretty heavily onto red mana sources, um, or, sorry, cards that need red mana sources. And now we'll be able to play this Accumulated Knowledge, draw a couple more cards off that, and things are looking really good. Um, now, something to keep in mind, just always remember that he saw this card revealed. Uh, we're not going to tap out to play it, though, we're going to play the Coiling Oracle. Um, you could tap out to play it, because he knows it's there, but you then prevent yourself from being able to counter later on. Um, I think it's it's a better play at this point in time to to keep it this way. And you want to, like I said, deal with those creatures as they come down. Um, so Simic Growth Chamber is going down. I'm going to be able to swing through with one um, and have mana open for counter spells later on. Uh, next turn I will have plenty of mana that I can tap out for the Mold Shambler and still have mana left over for a counter spell. My opponent did hit a fourth land, so this will be, you know, at least a, a mildly decent opportunity to take care of that, bring it back down to three. Um, the thing he's he's looking for, you can tell though, is is red mana, not this. So you see, we we have enough to tap out all my forests. I drew every single forest. Like I said, this is kind of a, a weird draw for this game, running into so much green land. Um, but I can tap that out plus the chamber, use the shambler to kill off an island, and still have three mana open and available to counter spell as well as. Um, vapor Snag. This is a, a pretty ideal hand right now. Um, what you want to be seeing, you've got four very good control options in your hand. And, uh, you know, his deck is not very heavy on creatures, but, you know, you're, you're still sit sitting pretty good. Uh, now we draw another kill spell for his lands. He did hit that fourth land yet again, so we're going to do this. Um, you could make a, a case for holding onto those until he found red mana. 
Um, I, I think it's more important to do it this way. His big red mana spells are going to be really the hounds. Those are the things I'm really worried about. Um, and we already took care of a couple of those. So um, He does finally get this down, and you have the opportunity now. You don't have the Thermal Karst anymore, but if you have to, you could use the Vapor Snag, return the Shambler to your hand, and replay it to kill off that mountain. Um, he attempts to play yet another Hound, which he was waiting for. I used a Rune Snag. You know, let's get that off the table. I don't want those creatures coming down. Those will be troublesome for these. Um, it will also be troublesome for the Shambler. If he blocks the Shambler, he will be able to kill it. Um, the Hound's actually a really great card for Pauper. Um, I'm, I'm a little surprised it doesn't see as much use outside of Standard, but I think it's it's a pretty strong creature, actually. So we draw yet another answer. We didn't have to Vapor Snag our Mold Shambler. We can keep these in hand as a defensive spell, thanks to the fact that we drew this Spreading Seas, and we will use that to transform his mountain. And we, you know, even better, we get a Lonely Sandbar. We'll attack with all these, and we'll save the Sandbar until end of my opponent's turn. Um, before we cycle that, because that way we, we leave our three blue manas open, we have the ability to Vapor Snag and Counter Spell. Then my opponent, you see this, he used Silent Departure, returned that to my hand, and I could have Counter Spelled that, um, but there's no point. If he's going to give me the Shambler back, and he knows it's going to cost him another land, I'm more than happy to take it back. Um, he is at this point in time, it does prevent him from losing the game um, on, on the next turn, so you know that's kind of why he had to do it. But you know, he, he may have a counter spell for it in hand. Um, I you know, I don't believe the, the standard popper version has this counter spell kind of protection um, to deal with, with creatures coming back in like this. But you know, I'm like I said, I'm more than happy to take that back to my hand and destroy another land, um, or eat a counter spell. Um, end of turn, cycle the land, drew accumulated knowledge, so now I will play the accumulated knowledge. Um, no point in waiting until your turn to get it, just put it out there. And you see we draw the Sprout Swarm, and had we, you know, had one extra land, we would have been able to play that as well at end of turn, but unfortunately we did not. Um, so now we will be able to, we'll tap out, we will replay the Mold Shambler to destroy a land, and um, get the uh, Simic Growth Chamber can come into play, and we can get that Drake down as well. Um, my opponent's sitting at two blue mana, he's going to be down to two life. Now we, we really want to play aggressive, you know, there's no point in leaving this mana open for the counter spell and vapor snag. There is no um, kind of board wipe that you will see, especially not when he's run blue and red from standard. Um, it's not really going to be a problem. We can play aggressive and we can put this drake out. We do have an oracle in here from earlier, um, and a, a cartographer as well that we can use to, to um, just throw away to the drake here. So we'll, we'll tap out those three, we will exile the oracle, we will play the drake, and my opponent will concede. Um, I don't think he would have had an answer for these three, three creatures, but, you know, a four is just definitely killer. Um, it's it's going to be game. I guess he, he figured he may have had one bounce spell in his hand, um, and was hoping to get a second, and then would have saved himself yet another turn, but, but having this fourth creature, it's just... It's game over. So I just wanted to show you this game. I think this is one of the, the stronger games of the, the ones I've shown you so far. Um, just gives you a good idea at how the, the control aspect of this deck can work and the counter spells and, and the draw abilities.